Okay, now let's look quickly at the same ideas, but dealing with the cosine of an angle. So for a small angle, we're looking at this angle right here. So this is our angle theta, and we know that the cosine of theta is, of course, the length of the adjacent side divided by the length of the hypotenuse. And you should be able to see from this picture that when the angle is small, the adjacent side and the hypotenuse are nearly the same length. So the cosine of theta will be close to 1. A cosine of theta will still be less than 1, but just barely so. Now imagine this angle getting smaller and smaller, and eventually down to the degenerate case here where we have not a triangle anymore but just a line segment. You can see in this picture right here the adjacent side and the hypotenuse are almost exactly the same. And in this case the adjacent side and the hypotenuse are exactly the same. So we can say that as theta approaches zero the cosine of theta approaches one. And then when theta is equal to exactly zero degrees, those sides are the same and we have one over one. So we can also write that the cosine of zero, the cosine of zero degrees is exactly one. And then think about a large angle. We're looking at this angle right here. This is my theta. And cosine of theta is still the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. In this case, the adjacent side is very short compared to the hypotenuse. So for a large angle, the adjacent side gets really small. So the cosine of theta is still greater than zero, but just barely. Cosine of theta is close to zero. And you could say cosine of theta is greater than zero, but just barely. And then the larger the angle gets, the closer the adjacent side gets to being zero. So you see here's a, a larger angle here, and then an even larger angle here. And in this case, you can imagine this angle right here becoming 90 degrees, and again we have the degenerate triangle. So the adjacent side right here gets shorter and shorter, and eventually all the way to zero. So you can say that the, you can write, well I'll come down here in the notes, says we write as theta approaches 90 degrees the cosine of theta approaches zero and then these ideas are articulated in the notes as well if you look in the notes the the next thing it says is that when theta equals exactly 90 degrees we have a degenerate triangle in which the adjacent side is completely disappeared the ratio adjacent over hypotenuse is at that point exactly zero. So you can write the cosine of 90 degrees equals zero. So we see that the cosine of zero degrees is one and the cosine of 90 degrees is zero. Those are facts you should memorize, but better than memorizing them, I would encourage you to understand why they are true. And those ideas must be true if you understand that cosine by definition is adjacent over hypotenuse and as the angle gets close to zero or close to 90 that adjacent side either gets very close to the length of the hypotenuse or very close to zero. And some quick examples demonstrating these ideas. Find the cosine of theta. So here's theta right here, this really small angle and the cosine will be the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse and you should see this is going to be 14 over 14.1 it should be a number that's very close to 1 but just a little bit less than 1 so cosine theta in this case is 14 divided by 14.1 and on the calculator that comes out to about 0 0.993 so that indeed is close to one, but just a little bit less. And then in this triangle, this is a right triangle, the right angle is down here, and theta is this angle here, and these sides are 0 0.28, 0 0.29, 0 0.9, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 0 0.10, 0 0.11, 0 
17 and 17.002. So we're told to find the cosine of theta, and it should be something close to zero, because this length is really small compared to the hypotenuse. So just doing the calculation, cosine of theta is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse, so that's 0 0.28 divided by 17.002, and that comes out to 0 0.016, and that is in fact close to zero.